Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Intercom video, we're going to be discussing the Intel XC, which of course is the line of graphics cards that Intel are planning to launch in the year 2020, and will aim to compete against both Nvidia along with AMD. This video will focus on my personal opinions on how Intel plan to do that, along with all of the information we know thus far. And let's just face it, the last year or two has been crazy in the graphics card market. On the software side of things alone, we've got Vulkan and DirectX 12, which are becoming increasingly popular in developers figuring out how best to use those APIs to full advantage. Then we've had the cryptocurrency mining boom and then bust, which led to crazy price fluctuations. I mean, you saw the prices of like the RX 580 and the 570. It was just absolutely monumental in some instances. And it was pretty much impossible literally impossible to get hold of a card at anywhere close to MSRP for a couple of months. And my discussions with various AIBs just said, well, yeah, they tried their best to get the cards to gamers in some instances, but people were just literally buying the cards and buy the truckload. What could they do? But let's just face it, it worked out rather well for both the AIBs and AMD and NVIDIA anyway. Speaking of NVIDIA, they've subsequently launched the GeForce 20 line of cards based upon the Turing architecture, which had been anticipated for months and months and months and months and months. Currently, they are targeting the bleeding edge gamers, which obviously the cards are more expensive than Pascal, but the RTX 2060 could be rather interesting, but we'll have to wait for benchmarks as currently we don't really know what the pricing is going to be, at least officially. We've got a rough idea of the specs, assuming the leaks have been accurate. And as for AMD, well, they are currently aiming at the mid-range market. They are very happy to target gamers who are 1080p, possibly 1440p, and of course just recently released the RX 590 with tweaked clocks on the core anyway, but they're really anticipating the launch of Navi, which is supposedly going to be early next year or possibly mid next year. And if the rumors hold up, we'll be targeting the RTX 2070, possibly slightly higher in terms of the performance level. As a slight aside to all of this, I am just getting over my cold. I thought I got over it a couple of days ago and it was like, no, actually, we're just going to come back with vengeance. But this time, hopefully I've kicked it in the uh, testicles. And with that said, I will be once again staying in Seattle for a couple of weeks because, well, I'm here with some friends and we're going to be doing like Christmas stuff. We're going to be having like a Christmas meal together, which is going to be interesting. It's going to be my first American Christmas. So I'm kind of looking forward to that and just kind of hanging out and doing stuff. But I will still be producing content, but you know, it's just for friends and so on and just kind of getting away for a bit. But, uh, I will be back in United Kingdom. Uh, I, think, I think my flight is the 10th. It's either the 10th or the 11th, but I'm pretty sure it's the 10th. That's really not good. That I don't know that off the top of my head, but there we are. This is what happens when you've had like a cold and basically dying of jet lag the last couple of days. I digress. Anyway, so then moving back to Intel itself. Currently, their line of integrated GPUs is just not really good enough for gaming. Let's just be honest here. But Supposedly, with Gen 11, this will change, and the information we have from Intel themselves tells us it's going to probably be roughly on par with Vega 8. Uh, that's uh, supposedly going to be launching next year with Ice Lake. But when it comes to the discrete cards with the XE architecture, uh, things are a little more ambiguous exactly what the performance levels will be because Intel just haven't given us any particular insight here. They've just given us a broad level overview. But that said, we can immediately answer a couple of questions off the bat. The first is that they will almost certainly be working with AIBs. I know that's pretty obvious, but some people have been theorizing that maybe Intel will do all of this themselves a little bit like, say, 3DFX did originally, or NVIDIA are trying to do with the Founders Edition cards. And I don't think Intel will do this. That's my personal belief. Maybe your belief's different. And if so, I'd like to hear your theories behind that. Leave them below in the description. But uh, Intel have been pretty happy to work with AIBs with, let's say, motherboard chipsets. And obviously, Obviously, they have established relationships with Asus, with Gigabyte, with MSI, and so on and so on. So I think they will continue to do that, at least in the short term. And I don't feel they're going to have that much difficulty having confidence and gained confidence from AIBs. I think that uh, AIBs will probably give Intel the benefit of the doubt. Obviously, if the cards suck, 
then AIBs are probably going to drop them pretty quickly if AMD and Nvidia do stomp on them. And that is one thing. Yes, Intel do have a lot of mind share with customers and they do have a lot of eyes on screen. There's like a billion or so devices, according to Intel themselves, which use variants of the Intel GPUs or at least have them in there, of course, after the device is bought. They could have then stuck in a GeForce card, for example, but I digress. The fact of the matter is that you will have a lot of uh, eyes which are used to Intel products. But with that said, there's that like confidence level of knowing that if you buy a GeForce card, if you buy a Radeon card, the drivers are going to be optimized. You've got all of these uh, feature sets and well, that is going to definitely be something that Intel will need to battle. Now, as a quick reminder, Intel are planning to segment their products into two distinct lineups. The first is discrete and integrated cards, which will be for consumers. So obviously laptops and desktops and so on. And the second will be cards specifically for the data center for high performance computing usage. This makes sense. And honestly, there were some rumors early on that Intel were only planning to target the data center but it just didn't make sense to me. After all, we've seen so many moves from Intel pushing the uh, drivers of their soft, of uh, their graphics cards to really um, focus on gaming. So I figured that Intel probably would want to do so uh, and target that with the discrete cards. These cards will definitely be built using the 10NM process, which Intel are confident will be ready by the year 2020. Yeah. While we're on the subject of graphics card drivers, Intel are pledging to increase the support and the speed of updates for graphics card drivers, because after all, drivers are the most important thing for post-sale support. There's nothing more frustrating to customers than being like, uh, why are there missing textures on this new game that I'm trying to play? There's nothing more frustrating than like, why is my game crashing? Oh, it's because there's a bug with this driver. I need to roll back to an older version of the driver and that type of thing can really frustrate consumers. So of course, it's critical that Intel resolve these issues in the future for both the discrete market for gamers along with the high performance computing users as well. So to that end, NVIDIA, uh, and AMD have really stepped up their software game. So we can almost certainly say that Intel will continue to do that. We've already seen them really push the software already, but it remains to be seen whether they can really keep up, at least in the first couple of years with Nvidia and AMD. Specifications for the cards are very much ambiguous right now. We don't have any idea of the number of compute units on the GPUs or clock speeds, or even really what type of performance we're gonna be seeing with the gaming variants of the cards, for example. It will almost certainly be up to date in terms of the latest standards for hardware streaming, for encoding, decoding, uh, 4K support. And another thing that Intel are definitely pushing is the adaptive sync technology, which works very similar to AMD's FreeSync. This actually could prove more of a problem for NVIDIA rather than AMD, because, well, the two technologies, AMD and in, uh, Intel's, are very close to one another. In fact, they are pretty much interchangeable other than wording. Whereas NVIDIA have the proprietary G-Sync. You can make arguments all day long about G-Sync being better than FreeSync, and it's well outside the scope of this video. But the fact of the matter is that you could say, well, that means two possible upgrade paths for me. If I buy this FreeSync monitor or whatever you want to call it, I can go with, or if I buy this G-Sync monitor, I am stuck inside the NVIDIA ecosystem. And that is definitely something that weighs on a lot of people's minds. And you have to make that decision. Like if you're buying a monitor and let's say you've bought a FreeSync monitor, but then you want to go with like a 2080 Ti, well, you are basically missing out on the FreeSync ability of that panel, which definitely sucks. Sure, if it's high refresh rate, you can still push 144 hertz or whatever, but the FreeSync side of things does go away. And that is definitely a fawn in the side of NVIDIA right now, particularly when Intel get in on the action. While we're on the subject of specifications, what about Foveros, which is the ability for Intel to stack chips in a 3D fashion? Now, Intel already plans to release smaller chips by 2019 using this technology, and it claims it's using the lessons learned from EMIB to really utilize fully this, and FPGA chips are also in the works as well. In theory, this drastically increases the ability for the company to push high-performance chips out there. 
And while Intel's 10NM process and manufacturing capabilities have been a thorn in the company's side of light, they may prove to be one of the crowning jewels for the upcoming products because quite simply, Intel have more options than Nvidia or AMD do when it comes to the actual production of their chips. And it's not inconceivable that they could produce 3D chips or MCM modules with absolutely uh, impressive levels of performance by simply stacking smaller chips together. Don't forget that Nvidia themselves did really look at creating GPUs based on MCM technology. And by doing so, they claim that they could produce a chip which is significantly more powerful than a single monolithic design. They could also uh, outperform quite significantly so an SLI configuration as well but NVIDIA yet have really started to employ this so Intel do have the technology to do it in theory but it's whether they would do so for Ar Arctic Sound and whether it would be ready uh, in time for such large projects. Fovros, by the way, is the Greek name for awesome, which, if nothing else, I have to give Intel credit for just the name and being so bold with it. But uh, basically, Fovros is using an interposer technology, and Fovros really uh, steps into its own when we are looking at designs which require small form factor implementations or extreme bandwidth uh, needs. The demo chip we've seen so far from Intel was a hybrid x86 design and we saw a single big core and four smaller atom cores which were put together on a 10nm piece of silicon. So what we have there of course is a variant of the big little design which ARM and other SoC manufacturers have been pushing for a number of years now. Now I'm not saying that there's a silver bullet for Intel and interposers and that type of technology are nothing particularly new to the industry. We've seen interposers and 3D stacking and that type of thing being discussed by AMD and Nvidia. But it is certainly a possibility that uh, Intel could employ this uh, philosophy with uh, Arctic Sounds. And as for AMD, well, uh, Mr. Wang over at uh, AMD has said that they are considering pushing MCM technology for their GPUs, it's something they're working on, they just don't feel it's quite ready yet. So that probably won't uh, come into play with Navi, but by the year 2020, uh, AMD will most likely have their next gen architecture ready, of course. So it's possible by that point, AMD and Intel will be releasing chips based upon the MCM technology. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if Nvidia do very similar. Speaking more broadly for a moment, I personally believe that Intel getting involved in the GPU market is going to be a good thing for us as gamers because it will most likely help to stabilize the prices of GPUs. I believe that Intel's strategy, and I could be wrong here and I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on this, for the first generation, possibly even the second generation, this goes back to what I said about the mindshare and people's trust in their ability to release GPUs will be pretty simple. They will put out the best product possible, but also most likely at the cheapest price possible. Because they can, as a company that have quite a bit of cash, say, hey, you know, what we want to do is just enter the market, which is a bit like Microsoft did with the original Xbox. M Microsoft did actually sell the original Xbox at a loss because, of course, they were planning to not only uh, build up mindshare with customers with the Xbox brand, but they also figured, well, we can make money back on the software. So I don't think Intel will be doing anything that crazy because obviously they can't make money back on the software. But I do feel that they're going to release the cards as cheap as possible. This could be very good for us as customers because obviously GPU prices have been crazy right now. And let's face it, even if Intel only have one GPU, which is a nice offering, let's say in the mid-range section of the market, that's great for us because it just means that, hey, not only do I have this choice of the Radeon 780 or whatever it's going to be called, I've also got this Intel XE card that I can go with. And that's great. Intel are putting a lot of emphasis on simplifying software development on CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, and so on using the One API. Now, this is probably going to put more pressure on NVIDIA than anything else, particularly when it comes to the high-performance computing market. Back 
let's say 10 or 12 years ago, GPU computing was not really a thing. But now, well, virtually all of the major supercomputers use clusters of GPUs to be able to produce the results and the performance that we're getting accustomed to. So Intel really getting involved in that market and putting the thumb screws on NVIDIA is not particularly surprising. Therefore, how NVIDIA plans to tackle this and how much of a dent it will make in the monopoly of CUDA really remains to be seen. My closing thoughts on this are pretty simple. I don't think that Intel has this in the bag by any stretch of the imagination. Instead, they have a lot to prove, but they also have a lot to gain. The bottom line is that from the perspective of gamers, well, when it comes to buying a GPU, AMD and NVIDIA are the companies that you trust. Whether you prefer Team Red, Team Green, it doesn't matter. The fact is that most people know that if you want to have the highest frame rates, you will buy a Radeon card or you will buy a GeForce card. And well, that's it. And software side of things, we know that the drivers are stable and so on and so on. So I guess my point is that for Intel, it's not really that they have all to win. Instead, it's for AMD and NVIDIA to lose. But regardless, it's great for us as consumers. And I do feel that it's going to put a lot of pressure on both companies. To me, by the year 2020, a lot is going to change in the industry. We know that most likely streaming is going to become even more popular. The next generation of consoles will presumably be on store shelves. And with that, graphics technology is going to continue to evolve, much like when the PS4 released and the Xbox One released. Developers were able to really leverage new graphics techniques. We should have a better understanding of ray tracing and whether Intel will even cater towards that and whether ray tracing takes off at all. So there is a lot of moving parts right now in the market. It's going to be fascinating to see how all of this works and what strategies that Intel and all of their competitors will be employing. But for now at least, I am cautiously optimistic it's going to be great for us as customers whether you want to stick with NVIDIA or not. The fact is that if it does lower the prices, gives us just a larger gamut of people willing and able to play PC games because that's the other thing as well. With Gen 11 on the Intel uh, CPU's Ice Lake, with Ice Lake uh, using Gen 11 uh, graphics, in theory at least we should see games at least semi with all of that said hopefully you have enjoyed the video normal stuff like share comment and subscribe and i'll see you soon take care bye for now